To add a rubric to an assignment in Google Classroom, just create a new assignment, or you can use the three dots to edit one of your existing ones. Select the Add Rubric option and decide if you want to create a new rubric or reuse or import one that you have already created in this or one of your other Google Classroom courses. I'll start by creating a new one and then I will show you how reusing and importing works next. You can create as many criterion and levels as you need. Let me switch over to a somewhat finished rubric for a second so you can see what the criterion and the levels you're about to enter will look like when you're done. Essentially, the criterion become the rows and the levels become your different columns. Let me switch back to the rubric I am editing and I'll create my first criterion, which will be introduction. And I'll start by entering the maximum points for this criterion, which will be worth 10 points. And I will add in a description for that 10 point level, which really I'm just copying and pasting from the rubric I have in a Google Doc. To add in additional levels, click the plus you don't need to create a level for each point value. For example, I can still award a student a nine out of 10 for this criterion, even if I don't create a level for that point value and just skip to creating one for the eight point value. Only the criterion name and point is required. Level names and descriptions are optional. And if you leave them blank, only the points you assign will display. So if you don't wanna think of various level titles, just leave them blank. And you can even toggle off the use scoring option here if you just wanna use the rubric for feedback and enter a holistic grade later or no grade at all. If you do that, any point values you have already entered will be erased. To add your next row or criterion, click the add criterion button. Or if your next criterion is pretty similar to the one you just created, you can use the three dots by your existing criterion to duplicate it and then make any necessary changes. Each criterion can have as many or as few levels as you like. So if I want my next criterion to only have two or three column level descriptions, I can easily do that. And of course, each criterion can have different maximum point values, so you can weight your items accordingly. Click Save when you're done, or if you're just done for now, and then adjust your other assignment settings as usual. When you're finished creating your rubric, currently you must manually adjust the assignment points and the rubric points to match each other, but I expect that at some point in the future, these two fields will sync up. When you want to make changes to your rubric, click on your rubric to expand it and then choose the three dots and select edit. Make your adjustments or use the three dots to delete or rearrange your criterion. You can edit everything on a rubric until you start grading with it. After that, you can only edit text to fix typos, but point values cannot be altered and levels or criterion cannot be added after you've already started grading with the rubric. Save your changes when you're done, and I am going to click Assign to send this out to my class. Let's switch to Student View. Students can click on the rubric from the Classwork page to view it. And here's what the rubric looks like to students when they visit the assignment page. They will need to expand each criterion to see the level descriptions if you've created those. Let me submit this assignment as a student and then we will go back to teacher view to see how you can use your rubric when scoring. Open the student submission and then visit the grading tab to access your rubric. Click on the score for each level or type in a score by hand if a student is scoring in between two of the levels you've created. You can add in any relevant comments and the points you entered or selected for each criterion level will total up for you automatically. So when you're done, simply return the paper. When the student revisits the assignment page, he or she sees the rubric indicators and the feedback you've provided. To reuse a rubric on another assignment, the first option is simply to choose Reuse Rubric. Other rubrics in this class will display first, but you can easily toggle to other Google Classroom courses to find a rubric that you've used in those. Rubrics are named according to the assignment they are attached to, and when you reuse a rubric, a copy of it will be renamed according to your new assignment and any changes you make to the rubric here will not affect your other assignment or the rubric there. 
So I can reuse the rubric, open it, and make changes, but those will not affect the assignment I copied the rubric from. You can also use the export import option for sharing rubrics, which lets you share your rubrics easily with colleagues. First, edit the assignment with the rubric you want to export and click on the title of the rubric to expand it. Use the options in the top right corner and choose export to sheets. This exports your rubric to a folder in your drive called rubric exports. Just note that if you edit the spreadsheet or change the file format, it's not going to import properly to your course or anyone else's course that you share this with. But you can share this Google Sheets file with your colleague. And then from their class, your colleague can go and create an assignment or edit one. Choose Add Rubric, Import from Sheets. It's definitely easiest for them to search for the rubric that you have shared with them by name since the drive option is going to default to just searching for rubrics that they own. But once the rubric has been located by your colleague, they just need to click add. And after it's been imported into their course, they can make changes here and it's not going to affect your version of the rubric. Rubrics are a wonderful, flexible grading and feedback tool in Google Classroom, which will streamline your grading.